This is the Flowtech Hotend from MicroSwiss. It was originally released for the Creality K1 series of printers as a drop-in replacement, and I've been running one of these in my K1 Max since late last year. Since then, the line has expanded, and it's now available for a variety of other Creality and Elegoo machines. I've been testing the Ender 3, V3, and Plus printers, and when I spoke with MicroSwiss, they let me know they were releasing a Flowtech hotend for these machines and were interested in sponsoring an install video. Well, this past week, I installed one in the Ender 3 V3 Plus, and I've been having fun testing out the 0.8mm Diamondback nozzle with it. In today's video, we'll go step by step through the install process of swapping out the stock hotend for Flowtech. This is a fairly simple process and requires no changes to the firmware. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before we do anything else, let's first go over what's included with the Flowtech hotend. In the box, you'll find a printed version of MicroSwiss's online PDF guide that's nice to have as a quick reference a copper thermal adapter with two titania mounting screws, some thermal grease that we'll be applying to that adapter, the main unit itself, the Flowtech heater core, a new silicone sock for it, and a 0.4 millimeter brass plated nozzle. While this is the nozzle that comes standard with the hot end, if you do need a specialty nozzle, MicroSwiss now has their CM2 hardened steel nozzle, the Diamondback nozzles, and the just released Flowtech CHT nozzle if you're looking for even higher flow. For my install, I'm going to be using the 0.8mm Diamondback nozzle. In addition to what's included with this kit, you will need a couple of tools. This includes a 1.5 and 2mm Allen wrench, as well as both a 6 and 7 millimeter wrench for removing the old nozzle and installing the new one. With that out of the way, we are ready to start the disassembly of the old tool head. Start by unloading and removing any filament that you might have had previously loaded into your printer. Then turn off your hot end and to avoid any accidents before you continue, make sure that it is cooled down to room temperature. Then flip the power switch to the off position and disconnect the power cable. We'll start by removing the fan shroud. To do this, you'll need to remove a screw on both the right and left side of the shroud using the 2mm Allen wrench. Use your hand to move the tool head to the far right and far left side of the carriage to make it easier to access both of these screws. With those removed, we can now lift off the fan shroud. This is held in place by two pegs located at the top of the tool head. In order to remove it, you'll need to pivot the tool head towards you, hold it with one hand, and then use your other hand to sort of slide it back and forth upwards to pop it off of those tabs. Once you've got it off those tabs, you can slide the whole thing forward towards you, but don't pull it too far off because there is a cable from the fan connected to the tool head board. Next, grab the connector for the fan as close as you can to that breakout board and disconnect it. Now that we've got direct access to the hot end, we can start by removing the old one. Starting with the silicone sock. There's a ridge at the bottom of the stock hot end, so you'll need to pinch and pull the sock at an angle to get it off. Then take your 2mm Allen wrench and insert it into the opening on the right side of the heatsink. There's a set screw inside of here that we need to loosen. It doesn't need to be fully removed, but we do need it loose so that we can unscrew the nozzle. Then use your 6mm wrench, or in my case a nozzle removal tool, to unscrew the stock hot end. Depending on how much printing you've done with your machine prior to this upgrade, it might take a little force to get started, but as long as you remove that set screw, once it gets going it should be simple and you can just use your hands to remove the rest of the threads. Now we're going to remove the stock heater core. This is held in place by two screws on the bottom of the heatsink, and we're going to use our 1.5mm Allen wrench to remove them. Both of my screws had little standoffs on them, but we're not going to be reusing any of this hardware, so you don't need to worry about holding on to any of those. The last step of the disassembly is just to disconnect the thermistor and heater cables from that breakout board. There is a little clip on the inside of each cable, so you'll need to press that in with your thumb as you're pulling the cable out to make sure that you don't damage any connectors. Now to install Flowtech, starting with the copper thermal adapter. The first thing we'll need to do is apply some of the included thermal paste to the copper adapter. We need to cover the section between the bottom flange and the black o-ring. 
I found it easiest to squeeze some of the thermal paste onto your work surface and then use something like a Q-tip to put just a little bit on and then just sort of paint on a thin coat from under that O-ring all the way down to the bottom flange. I went a little heavier than I needed to, but I cleaned that up in just a moment. With the thermal adapter prepped, we can now install it into the bottom center opening of the heatsink. This needs to be pressed all the way in and I found it to slide in fairly easily until the last little bit where I had to put a little bit more force to sort of pop it into place. At this point, if you have any excess thermal paste like I did, just take a napkin to wipe up anything on the bottom of the thermal adapter. Now we'll attach the Flowtech heater core to the bottom of the heatsink using the two included titanium screws. Start by using your 1.5mm Allen wrench to secure one of the screws in place. You want this screw to be nice and tight, but since it is a small screw, just be careful and make sure you're only hand tightening it. With the first screw installed, take the heater core and align the hook at the top of it so that way it's on the smooth part that's sticking out from the screw. Make sure that the wires are facing towards you when installing. And then take your other screw and stick it onto the other hook on the opposite end of the heater core and use your 1.5mm Allen wrench to install that second screw into the bottom of the heatsink, securing it in place just like you did with the first one. Once you've got these installed, the heater core will still be able to bounce up and down or wiggle. Don't worry about that, we're going to take care of that in just a moment. Install the heater and thermistor connectors to the breakout board in the exact same spot that you just removed the stock heater core's cables from. These cables have different size connectors and can only be installed in one direction. It is time to install your Flowtech nozzle. For this, I recommend just using your hand to thread the nozzle into the heater core and then all the way up into that copper adapter. Once you've got it nice and snug by hand, then take your 7mm wrench and finish tightening the nozzle. The recommended torque spec is 15 inch pounds or 1.7 newton meters. However, I've always just used a simple wrench or socket to tighten the nozzle by hand. Also, with Flowtech, you don't need to do a hot tighten, so getting it snug while it's cold is plenty sufficient. Once the nozzle is secured in place, take your new silicone sock and align it so that way the cutout slot for the wires is facing towards the front. Then just push the silicone sock up until it wraps around the top of the heater core. Just the very tip of the nozzle should be sticking through the bottom of the sock. We're ready to reinstall the fan shroud. Start by taking the fan cable and reconnecting it to the plug at the very top right of the breakout board. This is a smaller cable, so just be careful and mind the orientation to make sure you're pushing it in the correct way. Before sliding the fan back onto the tool head, I did notice that I had to actually push up on the thermistor and heater wires from the new heater core, so very gently push where the red connector is on the heater core upwards ever so slightly to angle it, and that'll make it much easier to then slide the fan shroud back onto the tool head. Make sure that the top of the fan shroud is pushed in far enough that it's seated onto those two small black pegs. And lastly, we'll be reinstalling the screws that we initially removed using our 2mm Allen wrench on both the left and right side of the tool head. Now all that's left is to plug in our power cable and power on our printer. Once it boots, as long as everything was installed correctly, you'll see a normal thermistor reading. And if we tell the printer to heat up our hot end, we can see it climb right up to temperature. Once verified, all that's left is to slice up a file and start printing. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are now up and running with your Flowtech hot end, or at least have a much better idea of what the process is like to do this upgrade. I'm very excited to have the larger nozzle on the Ender 3 V3 Plus because it has a big build volume and I'm hoping to use it to crank out a bunch of Gridfinity bins very quickly. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.